Welcome to the Monday Night Mentor. I'm Matt Farm Hop Life. Uh, tonight we're talking about the kids are not all right. We got problems. But first, uh, personal event. Jeremy, go ahead. Personal event. Uh, I bought a four wheeler. Um, nice. Used. One of the, what used? Yeah, used. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I bought seven other properties at tax sales. Seven. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know the properties. I bought the tax certificate, but dang. Yep. So uh, eleven acres, which is there's an eleven acre plot that I want to keep. The others, I kind of want to hold on to them and flip uh, to pay for some future stuff. But um, yeah, so that that was this week. Nice, cool. dude. Nice. So what now, the, now my like- luck. My luck, they'll come back and they'll redeem all the properties and I won't have any of it. And I'll just make, you know, I think I'll end up making like 10% off my investment. Mm. Which still isn't bad. That's better than just indexing it. Like, right. So, not bad. Yeah. Nice, dude. Good for you. So, like, these, so I'm, I'm still, I, I looked into it like twice since we you first talked about it. This property or these properties that you front the tax bill for you just yep. pay the taxes like once a year. So it's like a couple thousand bucks each or how much are we talking? Uh, so yeah, you pay the taxes. I, I mean, for all the properties that I bought, I, I invested $4,500. Um, it's not a lot for seven for, properties. For what I got, yeah. For what I got, no, well, like there was 11 acres, the 11 acres is actually broken up into a few parcels, but it's all together. Um, there's another, like a seven acre parcel, uh, another acre, yeah, something. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all decent sized properties. And uh, so basically the, the, the county auctions them off once a year. If you don't pay your taxes, they auction off the, the, the property. Well, they, they don't auction off the property, but they, they auction off the, the tax certificate. And so you pay the tax, you pay the past due taxes, penalties, interest, and then the original owner can come back and redeem the property, and they pay the you know, all, everything that you've paid plus whatever interest is due to you. Um, but after if after six years they don't redeem it, then I can go back and clear the title and not own it outright. Sorry, I uh, I had to restart my internet. Oh, cool. You mean tell it was like five minute story. You mean tell it all again? Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I actually don't care anymore. Uh, cool story, bro. Nice. Cool story, bro. <laughs> no, that's awesome, though. All right, Grant, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're yelling, actually. Okay, well, I'm actually driving to the beach right now. Um, I'm on my honeymoon, and yeah, just having fun. I got clumping bamboo. That's awesome. When are you going to make a um, vehicle out of totes, like the tote mobile? <laughs> um, that'd be pretty cool, like a bus. I'm on board. Yeah, something. Yeah, Anything. it can. It can't be that hard. It can't be that hard. I mean, I don't know. Elon's having problems with his Tesla, so. Yeah, but I'm not going to run it on a battery. That's true. Maybe you could just put uh, a go-kart as the as the frame and then put like a tote over it and cut a little hole for the windshield and goats go. in the front pulling it like a sleigh <laughs> goats and totes nice yeah oh your name changed ibc king or goats and totes what i mean it's I, that's what uh, that's what scott keeps calling me mm. but i had i'm not signed in on anything on my phone so i'm just driving um uh, so i just made up something real fast Ah. I'm surprised it wasn't Grant, ASDS. And Grant, I, I was in a basketball league when I got married, and let's just say that, you know, I didn't show up for all the games after that. So, you know, you, you could be excused, you know, from the men's forum on your honeymoon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I pretty much just wanted to jump in for like the first five minutes and then leave. That, that's, that's, that's good. Well, we're very I've been happy married for, for 28 you, years. I highly recommend that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but, me, uh, me and Jeremy tried to stop him. 
We did. Yep. Yeah, but again, again, I'm driving, so it's it's good. Um, we're gonna start turkeys when we get back, which I'm excited about. Uh, I'd rather I'd rather go ahead and start turkeys than chickens. So we're gonna use the IBC totes to make uh, about nine chicken tractors, and then get that going. Chicken tractors or turkey tractors? Well, poultry tractors. I was just making sure I followed the. the and you're story. also like gonna have like peacock tractors or something like that, and you're gonna sell like gourmet, like Thanksgiving using peacocks instead of turkeys or something. I don't. We know. we didn't get. We actually did not get peacocks. So well, you were actually going to get. Oh wow! Okay, I've missed. Yeah, well, we we were in. We we got on Craigslist once we got here. Well, De- Destiny did. She got on Craigslist. We were driving to the nurseries. She found peacocks. I'm like, fifty dollars a peacock sounds like a really good price. Then we price matched it, and we can get them cheaper at home. Hmm. Well, so... <laughs> Do you price match? Okay. <laughs> can you price match my peacock? <laughs> oh my goodness! Will you honor this price? But, but hold ridiculous. up, hold up. Okay, now I may be, I may just be ignorant. But what's what's the value? On a home instead of having a peacock. Uh, so they're a peafowl, like guineas. They'll just they eat ticks, and then you can sell them and their eggs. It basically just you know, okay. like like we've been doing with ducks, selling them, selling the the ducklings and chicks, sell the baby peacocks. There's a couple of people watching right now. I want to know if they own a peacock. Probably not. I've never met anyone that owned a peacock and liked it, especially mm. and liked it. That's the key. <laughs> it might it might become a Thanksgiving dinner at some point, depending on how loud they are. Yeah, I've heard I've heard stories. I mean, you can always sell their feathers on e- on Etsy. Yeah, just pluck them and wa- see how long it takes them to regrow. Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. I think that'd be terrible for you and the bird. I mean, if you hold the bird and yank it out a handful at a time. I feel like PETA might get involved with that. They just might. They're sourced ethically. <laughs> ethically sourced <laughs> feathers. Yeah. We cut their heads off first and then and then eat them. Yeah, I don't. Everything what you just said, Peta's like getting ready to crash your honeymoon and drown you in the ocean. Anyway, oh, we're we're about to the beach, so we're gonna we're gonna cut out. All right, where, where, which beach you going to? Um, it's at, it's in Fort Morgan. It's like a private beach that we have access to. Nice. All right. Enjoy. Cool deal. Have fun, y'all. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Bye, guys. Congrats on the peacock. Yeah, he's right. only like an hour and a half from me right now. Because normally he's a couple states away, right? He's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Padre, what's up? Uh, I have replaced. Dogs? Do what? Did you have you killed any dogs? No, I haven't killed uh, any dogs. You probably hear the one barking back there. Uh, my female is in heat and he can't get to her and he's not happy about it. So, uh, uh, I've, I've replaced the chickens that I lost. Uh, there's that. I'm actually ahead of where I was. I found somebody with, uh, somebody I trust to be honest with me, a year and a half old laying hens. And, uh, she sold them to me for the same price, uh, but next to nothing. So. All right, can't complain about that. Instead of twenty twenty five dollars a bird, pay ten dollars a bird for them. Um, Consolation prize. So do you yeah. have to set up a new appointment with the state, whatever? Yeah, I got to redo all that. Um, I have chicks and a brooder now that are going to the run in about a week and a half. Once I have all the hens together, and they've intermingled and shared whatever germs they're going to share, then I'll get the state inspector to come out here. Got is it. that new with bird flu or is sorry do what i was asking if that's a new protocol with bird flu or if that's a standard protocol 
It's uh, MPIP. It's the National Poultry Improvement Plan. It's been around, I think, since the 70s. Okay. Um, Mississippi requires MPIP certification, which they come out, they take a blood sample from the birds, and they test it for, for any diseases. <clears throat> uh, Mississippi requires it to have an egg seller's license. So you have to have the MPIP certificate. The good thing about being MP- MPIP certified, if I ever did get, did get bird flu, had to kill off the flock or whatever, if you're MPIP certified, the USDA will actually reimburse you um, the money to replace your chickens. Wow. So all these people that are getting or culling a million birds, two, two million birds, three million birds, they're all getting reimbursed by the federal government on this. Uh, so it's no big deal to them. No. So other other than that, uh, crops are doing great. Had an amazing farmers market weekend. I mean, I just about sold out of every vegetable I took up there. So uh, that is up good. and rolling well. That is good news. Is it the is it the one that's closest to you? Because you were like driving out of your way to go to that one that kept forgetting you were coming or something. No, I cut ties with them. Um, actually, uh, I messaged the mayor of the city. Like, you need to pull me off your your, your email list. Like, I, I completely cut ties with them. Twice was enough. Waste of time, a waste of money, and waste of gas. And yeah, and I, I I cut ties with them. I I introduced a since I'm not doing that market anymore. I went on my website, created a new produce page. I'm now doing home deliveries on Fridays. And market pickups on Saturdays. People can go online, order their vegetables, pay for it, and then just pick it up at the market. Excellent. That sounds good, dude. Very nice. Long story. Um, well, we launched a web store using Barn to Door. So longstoryfarms.com is now a, a web store. Um, so that's our big our big advance in the farm space. We um we had a decent market weekend, not great, uh, a little bit rainy and stuff. Um, still working on the store. I'm hoping that'll be complete sometime in July. I'm not sure exactly when. We've got a uh, regulatory change ha- happening here in South Carolina. It's making it hard to get in touch with people to get the permitting done. So we'll see how long, how long that takes. But um, everything moving forward, you know. What's that website? Just longstoryfarms.com? Yep. Okay. Nice. Yep. Are you still held up on the um, store? I mean, not really. Uh, everything's in my hands now to get it get it done. Um, you know, but uh, we we just have the permitting issue with the state. We've got to work through. I, I want to get like a pre inspection before we. Uh, maybe not even a pre inspection. Just want to get someone to kind of sign off on you know the way we've set things up in the kitchen so that we're not going to have a problem. You know, find out that we're going to have to you know, build something or whatever that we don't know about. Um, so, but we've had trouble reaching the right people because they're they're moving uh, all the food regulation from Department of Health and Environmental Control over to South Carolina Department of Agriculture, which is probably gonna be better in the long run, but in the mm-hmm. short term, it does create some, you know, transitional headaches. And my wife called one lady and she's like, she hung up on her and then called her back. And she's like, today's my last day call this number so we called that number it was disconnected <laughs> it's like goodness gracious you know kind of crazy but we'll figure it out uh hopefully we'll get that handled in the next couple of weeks good so come yep. along yeah look forward to updates pushing. so almost there yeah man almost there um cool i'm out of town i don't really have any any updates uh last weekend i was planting that mystery bush that you guys took 45 minutes to figure out. Um, did we ever figure out what it was? Uh, Padre did, yeah. He cheated, though, but that's fine. You guys I did. Know. I did. I used my uh, plan ID app. That's right. I oh, tried I thought to you said app. you Google it. I thought you Googled it. It was a, No, for, I, that's the uh, picture of this app. It's the name of the app. For for those that don't know, I, I, had, I sat behind a honey berry, like, for at least half the episode. Um, and I was up until 11 p.m. planting them. So they're in the how ground. Many, how many did you have? I only had three. Okay. But his soil is like 90% rock. So that is he had true. to fill his way in. That's right. I had to go get a permit for dynamite and <laughs> whatever. So 
yeah, got got those planted. Tried to make some more box like garden beds, and then uh, just ran out of time, dude. Had a wife got sick and delayed my flight on purpose so I could at least get her. Uh, it's not like I called it a bomb threat. Relax, <laughs> you like gave me this look, like you delayed your flight. How did you do that? Uh, <laughs> No, I just I just caught a different flight and uh, dynamite. That's but, how you delay the flight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Multi-purpose dynamite. Don't buy dynamite next time. Just buy sparklers, duct tape, and electrical tape, and it'll Some get the tan, job done. Tannerite, yeah. Yeah, you don't have oh, to. Oh yeah, the sparklers. That. Yeah, I like that trick. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you don't need a permit for sparklers, so. That's right. <laughs> Most states. We blew a trash can fifty feet in the air once. Oh, <laughs> Anyways, I'm uh I'm in Pennsylvania right now, so mm. I'll be home shortly. That's it. So, uh, this episode, I'm glad you're I'm glad you're on, Jeremy, because I'm gonna lean heavily on you for multiple reasons. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Long stories. Kids are way too old. Oh my uh, gosh. Padre... <laughs> <laughs> What are you saying here, man? Uh, they're basically my age. Padre's kids are <laughs> homeschooled. Uh, my kids are two and four, so they're not in school yet, but we're looking at it. And your son is in. I know you send your son to school. No, no shame there. Just I don't. I'm, you you I'm have not. boots on the ground. Hey, my my wife's a teacher, so you know that's true. Cool. That is true. I would I would lean heavily on Padre as well because I bet. She sees a lot more than, than what I might see. Uh, and as for so, the the no the no shame in public school, like we're in Alabama, and I don't think a lot of that. I think the agenda in Alabama has been a lot better than some states. The moment that we see that there's some type of agenda being pushed in schools, um, then we we've already had that discussion that we'll we'll yank them out. Hmm. I forgot but to he's, mention. An, he's an only child, so he needs that socialization. He doesn't have siblings. Sure. Uh, the reason I, I brought um, this up is that uh, in the news recently, there's that 10-year-old kid, Sam something. I forgot his name. Tusich? Tuch? I don't remember. Um, committed suicide after being bullied at school, and his parents complained and com contacted the school 20 times, and you know, surprise, surprise, the school did nothing. And the kid killed himself. 10 year old kid killed himself after being bullied. Now, um, a lot of people obviously blame the school for not doing anything, but it's like, what did you expect? I don't see a whole lot of like losing kid. Terrible, terrible. But let's be fair. The parents sent their son to school rather than anything else they had a hundred options and they chose to just so just... I'm, gonna, I'm gonna push back on you on that though all right because and i don't know the full story of that that situation but if those parents were working minimum i mean minimum wage jobs or, or low level jobs like they can't afford to stay home and homeschool their child or maybe put them into another school system uh, because it might cost something, so you know, cost them more than to go to whatever school that child was at. I, I don't know the situation. Now it could be sure. that they did have a hundred different options. It, it absolutely could be that, and it could be heavily you know, weighted on them. But I don't know that story. Well, I'm I'm going to side with uh, Matt here for a second. Um, the reason my kids homeschool is because of bullying, really bad bullying. Um, went to the school. School did nothing. Principal actually had the school resource officer block me. So he refused to talk to me. Oh, I went wow. and answered phone calls, wouldn't come back. Called the uh, the district office. They had nothing for me. They told me it was a matter between me and the school. I uh, had kids on the school bus threatening to kill my children. Bring, they're going to bring a knife to school. They're going to kill them. They're going to stab them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wouldn't do nothing. Or wouldn't do anything. So um, we we had to adjust ourselves 
to pull our kids out of that environment and, and to give them somewhere safe to homeschool. So we ended up with one of us on day shift and one of us on night shift and nobody really sleeping to uh, make sure the kids were able to, to have that safer environment because the school system absolutely would not do anything. Right. And I don't, I don't wow. disagree with Matt. I, I was just pushing back just a little bit because I don't know that situation of, of, of that family. Um, yeah. But if they had to me. I mean, look, if, if if we worked low wage jobs and didn't have a whole lot of options and our son was getting bullied, I would, I would do whatever I had to do. You know? Yeah. That, that's the only reason when that, when the story of that kid broke, um, it hit closer to home for me because we went through that. Um, that's awful. Not minus the suicide, of course, but yeah, it was one of those where we had no choice. There was nowhere else to send our kids. Uh, my wife was not done teaching or in school yet, so she was still working at the hospital, working in the NICU ward. So she she went to night shifts. And, and That's awful. I'm glad that that y'all were able to change the situation for sure. What were some other options you guys looked at, Padre? Uh, we looked at changing school. Our youngest was still in elementary school at the time. So this school is K through 12, and it's actually the school my wife works at now. Um, really? It's come full circle. It's come full circle, but, you know, completely different principal. The guy that's there now, actually, he just got promoted to superintendent. Um, but super nice guy, very anti-bullying. Um, put a lot of work in the special needs children. My wife's a special needs teacher. And uh, it's it, the school is complete 180 from what it was. Uh, how many years ago was that? My son's standing right beside me. Uh, I was five, it, so 10, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, difference. Hmm. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's kind of funny how that happened. They, they come through, they fired that principal like a year or two later and got this other guy, and and it's it's a much better place. Like I would actually be okay sending my kid there now. Um, if, if we had to, but at this point we've been homeschooling so long and we enjoy it. And I enjoy the extra time with my kids. So. Yeah. And, and, uh, I mean, without, uh, you know, being too focused on myself, we, you know, we had our first child was in kindergarten in public school and we chose to homeschool after that. So, um, it wasn't necessarily a bullying situation in the same sense as maybe this other kid, but there were constant impositions on our daughter because she was very tolerant of, you know, all the kids, she was a very just naturally loving kid. And so when the kid, the other kids would say, uh, show their privates to her my daughter would be like, Hey, what's up with that to my mom, my, to her mom and to, to my wife. And, you know, we brought it to the school's attention. They were like, Oh, isn't that cute? And it's like, no, it's not cute at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and there were constant things like that, that happened throughout that, that time. And, uh, that really ended up with us switching entirely to homeschool after that year. So she, none of our kids ever went to school after that. Um, that so that was, odd. Yeah, the, the teachers just were completely nonplussed by stuff that we thought was just egregious behavior for a five-year-old. We're like, it's not normal for a five-year-old to be asking to see a little girl's privates. It doesn't make any sense. And they, they were like, oh, that's cute. No, it, it, you know, some, some, some adult or some other older child is telling this kid this stuff. It's not, not normal, you know. So how long ago was this? Uh, it's, uh, I mean, she's 23, so, you know, it's been about 18 years, I guess. So, but it's, uh, I think it's just, it's only gotten worse. I guess my point, I think, you know, when we were, we were in the situation, the biggest issue for me was, um, my mother was dying of cancer and we, we were having to go and take her out, take her to school and then like basically walk into the office with her and then sign her out. So we wouldn't get written up for truancy. Yeah. And it's like, we're, this is a kindergartner. Why are we having this conversation? You know? Yeah, it's weird. So um, very, just, you know, just the schools, the schools just, I, I felt like at that point in time already were very difficult to deal with and just didn't seem worth it. Um, 
and I was a uh, I was really the one that was resistant to homeschooling. My wife wanted to do it before I did. Um, and I was kind of pushing back like, oh, they're, they're going to have to go to school and, you know, that kind of stuff. And the further we got along in the journey, the more we were like, nah, this is the right way to do to handle our kids. You know, so. I mean, there's such anyway. a freedom for your children to learn how they learn best. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can you can cater to them. You know, that, that doesn't happen in schools. My, that's one of my wife's biggest complaints is, Especially she has special needs students. She has 15. So she does what's called inclusion. So the special need kids are in class with, with regular kids, for lack of better terms. And um, she goes into the different classrooms and helps the kids one-on-one. -on -one. But even then, it's a struggle to give those kids that attention that they need. And, and it goes beyond special needs kids. You know, every kid learns different. And homeschooling you know my daughter's high energy we can take a break every 30 minutes and she can run around the yard and play with kittens you know get some of that energy out and then come back in and refocus so xavier um my oldest in homeschooling he's um he's pretty good self-taught he, he really works on his own really well he only comes to me when he's got serious questions here lately it's been algebra questions but you know it's you're able to tailor to each child so much easier. Right. It's really like, I mean, there's no possible way a school can take, let's say, 20 different learning types and sort it out. I mean, unless you're paying it, like a private school could, I suppose. But public school, it's just it's like a pump and dump, right? It's like pump in the information, dump them out to the next grade and then assembly line of knowledge yeah and see I, i'm i'm anti-medicating children and i see it through my wife's stories all the kids that are medicated at her school and most of it's high energy adhd you know my daughter's high energy adhd she learns different you know sitting in a desk eight hours a day is not her learning style and my daughter is more advanced than a lot of the kids in her grade in the public school talking to my wife um She's finishing fourth grade. She was talking to one of the fourth grade teachers, and we were doing poetry and uh, something in poetry. I can't remember now. And my wife was telling the teacher there, and she, she goes, I'm so jealous. She goes, they don't even let us teach that anymore. It's no longer in the curriculum. And she goes, you know, it's all, it's all, everything's focused towards the uh, state-based tests, right? Yeah. So that's all children are taught anymore because you got to make a certain grade. Score the, the school's got to score good so that they can get the financing, the get the, the government money in, and so they teach they teach the test, they teach one way. Um, so yeah, it's so uh, it's it's been fun, you know. It's and, and I want to say my daughter started out in private school, so she did she hasn't homeschooled the whole time. My my wife's first job was in a private school, and and they went to school where she worked at, but after. COVID pandemic and I lost my job and I came home. It was the very next year. We're like, all right, we're going to, we're just going to homeschool this. So Padre, you said that you would feel comfortable now sending your kids to that school, but if I had because, to, that's true. If you had to, is it because your wife now works there? So you kind of have like a man woman on the inside and kind of um, know how things are run now behind the scenes yeah it's not it's knowing how things are run now that that gives me that um that comfort because so when what, she started when she got the job there i was like oh you're going to that hell place you know i, I still have a very negative opinion of the school but you know I she's imagine yeah but she's from what she's told me she's like this this place isn't nothing like it was all those years ago you know, the, the admin team is what makes the difference in how schools run. That's what I've learned from my wife. Principal, vice principals, the admin team really dictates how that school runs. So, Jeremy, what gives you your level of comfort sending your kid to school? You know, we moved into the city that we're in for the school system. Hmm. My wife's sister teaches in the school system, um, one of the best school systems in Alabama. I mean, it's not the best, but it's one of the best in Alabama, uh, or at least in our area. And um, 
we have a very open level of communication with my son. I mean, you know, like, in fact, we were sitting at dinner before the podcast and, uh, and, uh, I said, Hey, guess what we're talking about tonight? And I told him you know, what we're talking about. And just asked, like, do you ever see bullying in your school? He's in fourth grade. But I said, do you ever see bullying in your school? And he goes, no, not really. I said, like, like kids picking on each other. He goes, like maybe every now and then, but it's, it's like, you got a tiny nose. Like, that's it. You know, it's, True. but it, it's not violent. It's not. No, it's not. And I think it's, I think it's personal. Right. I mean, and, and for us, I mean, again, I think it's where we live. Um, but even like the teachers have said, like this grade of kids is like a really good grade of kids. And so I don't know if we just kind of looked into it. I have no idea, but we mental health issues run in our family and we always keep a check on him. Hmm. You know, hey, it's okay to be sad sometimes. Do you ever feel sad? Like, like we, we, we have those conversations. I mean, not like every day, but I mean, we routinely will just kind of check in like, because if you, if you're sad, if you're depressed and, and you don't, as a, as a 10, 11, 12 year old, you don't know what depression really is. You don't know how to label it. Right. Yeah, so we ask some of those questions, and I feel like there's a pretty open communication channel with this, you know, but I guess none of us ever truly know, but, right, yeah, you know, it it's really kind of based on where we live, the, the insight that we have into the school system, and, you know, I think we, we're pretty comfortable with where we are, but again, at any moment, if there was, if there was any bullying situation going on, I'd yank him out in a heartbeat. My wife would stay home from work and 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 homeschool, you know, or we'd we'd do something. We do whatever we have to yeah. do. Um, but we we just I don't know. Like you, if we had lived where we lived before this house, before this city, I would not have felt comfortable necessarily with public school. Interesting what you said. The teacher said about this year, the fourth graders being so great. Mm -hmm. So my daughter, my daughter's fourth grade, um, and my wife's favorite students are her fourth graders. She talks about how great they are. <laughs> so it's it's kind of interesting. And I don't, I mean, like all these kids, all their kids. Just, I was just saying, all like this group of kids, like they all get along, like they, like they all read and like they're competitive with each other, but like in a healthy way. And I mean, you know, like it's. It's bizarre. I mean, like, I, I remember elementary. Let's see, like, I think elementary school is pretty tame. I think once you start getting into middle yeah. school, you start seeing a lot more of the, the social cliques and the bullying mm -hmm. and the picking on people. So that's, we're still in the upper elementary school. That's um, kind of what I was curious about, how it will progress. And we've got our eyes on that and our ears open, and we're very aware and um you know, attentive to what could potentially come and again if it comes down to it i mean we yank him out just like that so uh, one thing that you brought up that i don't think like a lot of parents do is that they have an open line of communication with yep. their children so like in this case the parents obviously knew about the situation with their son but a lot of times that's right you hear a lot of stories where like the kid just ends it and the parents are like, I, I, didn't, was happy. Yeah, I didn't know anything was wrong. Well, it's yep. like, um, you know, not to like armchair parent here or whatever, but you know, and like, it's all hindsight thing. We're just talking about <laughs> things so that other parents can kind of, you know, be aware. Uh, we have to, look, we have to talk things. about it so people yeah. can learn. You got to talk <laughs> and you got to talk to your kids. Yep. <laughs> You know, um, so uh, two weeks ago, I went with my, I was very fortunate. I mentioned this briefly on Twitter, but I went to the Grand Canyon with my brothers and my sons. And we we did a one day trip uh, south to south down to the river and then back out in one day, which was grueling and uh, very, very difficult. But anyway, um, my brother who lives out in Arizona is an administrator at a large high school. Um, and you know, I was I was ragging on the public schools, and he's like, "It's not as bad as you think." Man. I said, 
he said our district is you know great and he talked about some of the policies they have like regarding uh trans kids and, and other stuff and it was just it was really kind of a white pill for me because um you know you you hear you see all this stuff online and you, you get this idea that it's like that everywhere or it's like that you know that every kid is you know secretly being targeted with some agenda and um you know most mostly and, and i i take uh the word for it you know i have a lot of friends here locally who are teachers in the schools and different things and i think mostly it's a good experience for most most kids you know um and i think the community matters a ton i mean i, I totally agree with um with dewey uh, on that and it's like there's the community you're in the school you're in how much the parents are given access and you know the ability to interact with administration and stuff like that that's that's a huge difference maker I mean, I think the issue for us was we were going, you know, in our particular system, school system, we were going to the school and saying, hey, we'd like to see this to be different. And there was really no redress at all. And, you know, that that that's the difference. right? If you can find that, great. I mean, I think I think schools in general, uh, community based schools is the best way to, you know, it prepares a kid for acting in a community in a way that, you know, homeschooling can't so you know we we always tried to you know supplement the homeschool experience with sports scouts church you know whatever you know um music classes um martial arts whatever you know whatever could find that would give them other forms of interaction with you know other kids and stuff and i think largely that was pretty successful i think um one of the kids in particular kind of got caught in the middle with our move to chile and back that kind of messed them up you know in terms of some of those activities but you know, all of them pretty well adjusted now and you know i don't have any big regrets but there's there's definitely some things that could have been better you know and if we felt like we trusted the school system locally so you bring but, up a good point um go go ahead jeremy but a little bit of a shift but i mean so i think i think the public school system can be you know, whether public or private school a, a, a school system can be good for a child to learn to deal with some difficulties in life. So like while bullying is bad, hands down is bad. Like it, it teaches you to deal with other kids with peers. And, you know, even if it's a, your nose looks funny. Well, like, okay. Yeah. That's a, a bad comment to make to someone, but you, you kind of, yeah, you get your feelings hurt a little bit and you kind of have to deal with how do you overcome that? And, and again, it's not a good situation, but, that, but it, and that I say that based off like there was a, a TikTok video that I posted this morning because uh, the the B video that that I had uh, posted a while back this guy called me a puss bag because I was suited up to handle bees and I'm like Dude, like it it costs you nothing to be nice like why why say that why not be you know why not encourage somebody but but like things like that like like did did that comment really bother me it didn't really. Two years ago, it would have. Now, it's as a social media creator. I mean, you kind of get used to those types of comments. But, but, so that that's an example. Like being in a school that that you get some of that bullying, light bullying. Okay, having a kid tell you that they're gonna kill your son. That's completely different, right? Right. But yeah, you know, I think that it does make you a little bit stronger emotionally. Um, but there, but there, there's a there's a fine line there. You know what I mean? Well, let's look at why homeschooling got so popular in the last three to four years anyways. Right. It was, it was a lot of this bullying stuff. Bullying, and then right. there was like all this COVID crap that went on and that parents were just like, why am I even sending you to school when you're not even learning nothing? You're on like zoom for eight hours a day. Anyways, that's not school. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, take away all these, negative things about school it could be a neutral if not positive experience for for people homeschool oh, yeah. positive uh, school school, school. school. Yes. The, yes. sending them to public school it could be neutral or possibly positive depending and that's where and that's where we are that's where in, in our current situation but like not everybody's that way i get it i totally get that we we have a very fortunate situation you know, I'm I'm not by any means anti public school. Um, obviously, my wife my wife works on one at, at, at Bayes or Sally. But uh, you know, 
it, it really it goes back to the school year and, and the administration that that's running it. Um, I got a I got a friend up north. Um, Matt knows him. I'm not gonna name names, but uh, his daughter, perfect, happy child, went to a new school. Um, within two months of starting school, was depressed, seeing therapy, didn't know if she was gay or not anymore, or like stuff that didn't need to go on in a sixth grader's mind. Yep. And it was all being pushed in the school. But my wife's school, I mean, she has she has Bible conversations with kids there. You know, she's not allowed to start it, but if they ask, she's the school system allows her to, to go with it. You know, she can talk all, all the student ones to know. And that's a complete, I mean, that's a difference. And I mean, the north and south, and I think, you know, I mean, because yeah, would, yeah, you're, that, yeah. you're Alabama, I'm Mississippi. And that's a big difference versus uh, New York State, Pennsylvania, Michigan, that area up there. Yep. So, what do you so think? Public. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was, I was kind of. What do you think is driving a lot of the the bullying or the, the? I personally think it's you know these, you know all the screens. I think yep. even pushing some of these LGBTQ agendas in a school system for kids that have no business having to deal with addressing those issues at such a young age probably doesn't help it either. Yeah, there's so much much yourself as as an adult. Go right ahead. You know, there there's so there's so much stimulation with kids, Mm -hmm. and 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 I'm kind of going to paraphrase my wife because we've discussed it. There there's so much stimulation with kids going on on day with the screens, and you know the schools allow phones in the classrooms now and and tablets and all that stuff. And that's weird. It's uh, it it creates a. We've created an environment for ourselves too, um, where we have to be stimulated all constantly. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, th- these kids get in these six, eight hour long classrooms and, and the stimulation is not always there. And their own stimulation, sometimes in negative ways. And talking to my wife again, a lot of it's from home. A lot of these kids that are bullies are acting out from home. Something's not right with mom and dad. They're not getting the attention they need, or they're in abusive homes, or you know. So there's there's all kinds of different, or, or there's all different paths that's leading to this problem. You know, it's, it's not one there's problem, one. one solution. No, that makes sense. It just seems like it's so much more. And I'll agree with you know with Matt's comment earlier that we're we've seen a, a huge rise and 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 maybe it's that because of. TikTok and Instagram reels and all these videos that are like just in our palms, we see it more often. Uh, but it seems like it's more prevalent. You know, home homeschooling is definitely on the rise. Uh, I was reading some statistics the other day, and it's up like four hundred and some percent since twenty twenty. Which that's a good and, indicator. And, and a lot of it, I think four twenty seven is the number, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But a lot of it, um, people. Related back to the pandemic and, and the homeschooling that was taking place, like you were talking about, these eight hours in calls. And it was just stupid. And and as a homeschooler, you know, my daughter is is where she needs to be. She's right along with her public school peers ahead in some places, right on schedule in other places. We finish school in three to four hours. Nice. You know, it's it's so I was homeschooled sort of. Um, I went to public school up into high school and then my 11th and 12th grade year I was like I'm out this is dumb I don't like it Um, well so my mom was homeschooling my three younger brothers at the time and I was like well she's already homeschooling them and she wasn't going to pull me out of high school or middle school whatever grade it was at the time but I was like I saw like they were finishing work in like three hours. And I'm like, I'm spending from eight to three at school. And so I said, Hey, I want to homeschool next year. And so my mom pulled me out and I homeschooled and I would go, I used to work, I worked at a gym. I'd go to work at the gym at 7 a.m. and get out, get off at you know, or 6 30 and get off at like 10. I'd come home, I'd do my schoolwork and I was done by two, three o'clock and I had nothing else. Now, mine wasn't a bullying situation. Mine was, I'm tired of the busy work. I want to be efficient. 
Yeah, yeah, it fits between those so hours busy. because that's when people work. So like, right? That's uh, otherwise uh, that's the only way school makes sense for like those hours, right? Do they, you know, mom and or dad go to go to work, right? Uh, nine and, and hours or whatever, and I, I'm a hundred percent convinced that's why school is those hours. Just conditions oh, yeah. you to work those hours. It, it's it's a daycare. And, yeah. and I mean, it's educational too. It's an educational too, but you know now parents can go to work and they don't have to worry about where their kids at until summer rolls around. Right. Which we got to well, start the conversation. Well, down we down here to like. down here to city schools have gone to um, year round schooling. So. Really? Yeah. The count the county schools like my wife still gets a summer break, but city schools are, are year round now. Do they just have like more breaks throughout the year? Yeah, they they do a week here, two weeks there, um, hmm. more often throughout the year. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know how that plays out. Yeah, my wife ain't for that. She's like, I need my summer break. <laughs> so, do they have any type of summer break at those uh, in the in the city district? They do like a two week summer break. Hmm. It's two weeks. They do two weeks in the. Uh, Summer, two weeks in the fall, two weeks in the winter, and two weeks in the spring. So they have those four two-week break periods. Interesting. So they could, they could bring in some gardening experts and teach kids how to garden then. Because, like, that's always been the – I a complete change of subject, but that's always been, like, why don't we teach kids to garden? Well, it's because it's summer and stuff grows in the summer and kids aren't in school. Yeah, I, I brought it up. I've mentioned it. So. It's a window so. <laughs> As I've mentioned it to people in the uh, the upper admins around here that could actually do something about it. And uh, I volunteered my time, too, and I haven't heard any back from anybody. So Now, at my wife's school, uh, they have one teacher that uh, she actually applied for a uh, Department of Education grant and got it. And she built uh, raised beds this year and bought some... Uh, you know, some starts to put in the raised bed. So uh, the last half of the spring semester, she's, she has been teaching her kids nice. uh, gardening with it. So I'm getting up with her this summer. And next year, I'm going to provide all the plants for her and, and help out in that way. Hey, nice. I mean, you guys have an 11-month growing season, so it's, it's like yeah. there is no winter for gardening just plant a different crop yeah i've had that conversation with her i'm like you know when when fall rolls around september october call me you know we'll get some kale planted some lettuce planted you know we, we can get plants growing i grew carrots i harvested my carrots in february planted them in november so she can teach you around so i'm getting with her and i'm going to be her plant supplier for the school and it, it's not much. It's like, I think she has three two foot by six foot raised beds. So it's not a lot of gray area, but it's enough. It's enough to take our fourth graders out there and let them play in the dirt a little bit. So, Matt, are you going to homeschool your kids when they get to that age? Or have you? My wife and I have talked about it with with my job, current current job, right? Me being out of town. And we have no family around. Um, she needs she needs breaks from the kids, dude. She is uh, she is not doing good. Uh, we we talked a lot today about it. Um, How far are you traveling? Much, in general, uh, too much, way too much. I don't like it for a lot of reasons. Sure. Uh, Look, my my wife's home every evening, and I need a break from time to time. But at least you're there, right? You're physically there. I'm off anywhere and everywhere, and it's it's not like it's not. No, no. Uh, there's not a schedule. No. It's not like oil field where it's two weeks on, two weeks off. Where I'm like, when my two weeks are off, like I'm home. Like when I'm not in the field, I'm at the office. Like it's. Yeah, no, no. I was saying, I I, I feel for her. I completely understand. Okay. So I have uh, I have help I, in the evening time and I still want 20 minutes here and there. Yeah. Right. So to I feel for you, Matt. I'm, I'm in the same situation. Um, 
happen. My, my, you know, my wife did it when I was traveling pretty much every week. My wife did it, but we had co-ops, you know, that there's, there's other ways to do it, you know, than just, you know, the mom being the teacher. Um, the other thing about it, and I'm sorry to just interject here, but the other thing about it is you know, one of the things my wife realized pretty early on is that she wasn't really a teacher. Once the kids learned to learn to read, she was more, she called herself the secretary. She's like, I just provide resources. And if they have questions, I go get more resources. And she didn't consider herself a teacher at that point. Yeah. I tell people so, I'm a tutor. I'm a tutor. Yeah. I'm not a teacher. Sure. Anyway, sorry to jump in there, but no, that's, that's all right. Um, we are looking into other things. Um, I've heard that the, I almost doxed myself, uh, what school it was, but there's another school that's supposed, that's just on the road. That's supposed to be better. That's also public. Um, still unsure about that. We wanted to do like these other, other schools, like outdoor school, like a farm type school there's some but um registration started april 1st and we couldn't get our shit together and figure out where we wanted to send um our son and so registration's full we got to get on a wait list and and these programs are rather expensive like even three days a week is a couple hundred bucks a month like five six hundred bucks a month it's it's a lot so um still don't still don't know what we're gonna do but i it what it tells me is that there is a lack of uh programs in our area that if all these things are full that somebody should start one start another one or whatever but i'm not i'm not gonna take that on and my wife's not gonna take that on we're just we just don't have that capacity right now maybe someday and well you're so much more rural than we are um i was gonna say we have we have homeschool groups in my local area and even as rural as i am i'm the only dad in the group but it's me and a bunch of moms meet at the playground and our kids go play and so we get that we get that adult interaction and the kids get that kid interaction and i'm, I'm telling you why i like jumping on these podcasts when somebody invites me i, I kind of miss adult interaction it's me my 15 year old and my 10 year old 24 7. we did find a homeschool type group through like a local church it's not a church that we go to but we looked into it and they looked at they had like they emailed us our their list of um oh, what did they call it agreement of faith or something i don't remember what it was and there was like um, some, some anti LGBTQ stuff in there, which, you know, my wife has family that is that, um, and she's like, I don't want our kids to grow up thinking their, their aunt is evil. Like they're just a per, like they're just a person. And then if you go down a little bit further, they talk about, like, I think they believe in like young earth theory or something like that, where, you know, like earth is only like four or yeah. 6,000 years old, stuff like that. And I'm like, I can almost get around that. I can almost work with that, but it's just, there it, it was too many. It, it didn't, I mean, didn't work for us. I mean, I mean, I think one of the, one of the myths about homeschooling is that, you know, you, you can somehow lower your guard on the curriculum. That's, that's absolutely false. I mean, we had, right. we had one, um, I think the curriculum, it was a Christian curriculum called, I think it's called sunlight S O N light. Yep. Yep. If You're I'm right. not mistaken. It's still, it's still around. Yep. And, uh, they they had a, a world cultures book that talked about the dirty Africans. And we were just like, what? Like, I mean, you know, we live in a, you know, did they call the natives the engines too? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what, you know, one third of the people in our, in our state and um, you know, about the same here in our County where we live now are African-American. Like, it's just not an appropriate, you know, way to contextualize other cultures and other races, you know? Um, for us, at least, and I'm sure some people think that's fine. But um, anyway, so we we you know we had to be pretty selective about that, and um, you know, curriculum selection is actually really critical. I think a lot of people just kind of default go, oh, I homeschool, and they think that's some sort of badge of honor. But you can get a crappy, you can do a crappy job picking your curriculum and create a lot more problems than sure. Than you oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. 
my, my wife and became like, somewhat of a guru on the stuff and i mean she you know she she would get public school teachers to call her and ask her about what's going on with this curriculum if she knew it i mean she just had it mm -hmm. cold so um but you know it, we had four kids and all four did a different math curriculum because they were different you know? so right i was yeah, just we, gonna say i can't take your curriculum you're like oh it's been vetted by long story i can use it well like i still need to look at it right see if it'll fit my kids learning style yeah, i mean you can take recommendations but you can take recommendations but you still have to do your own homework pun intended yeah, it's it's great to have it's great to have um you know the, the co-op type situation where you can trade and you know go to the fairs and stuff and talk to different people and you know you, you learn about your kid i mean you, you might try your first curriculum you know the first curriculum you try with your kid might not be the right one for them and then you have to switch it up and you know my, my wife you know she was like uh you know kind of like the software best of breed so she didn't care if the english curriculum matched the match you know was the same company as the math curriculum you know, a lot of people yes. like calvert calvert school she's like you know whatever i do i do math you see life of fred for math generally you know um, and I'm and I'm doing like I'm putting together my own curriculum for English because my daughter likes mythology or whatever, you know, like it, it's very much like um, just pick and choose the stuff that worked for us. Yeah, I was I was going to say we we've pieced together curriculums. We've kind of pieced together curriculums this year. Um, and then uh, Bible is an important subject for us. We're very religious, but uh, like when we use the Becca curriculum that is written by a baptist uh, college it was very baptist oriented um, religion i'm i'm eastern orthodox my wife is messianic jew and uh, the baptists don't really jive with us so we created our own um i guess bible class to to teach our children and so you got to be really careful what's in the curriculums like like long story said and and just calls and just calls this curriculum is really bad over here, and you don't agree with it. Doesn't mean their math isn't great, or their English isn't great. So you kind of gotta you, you really gotta pay attention. So you I use puzzle pieces together, kind of. Yeah, there's there's a curriculum called Easy Peasy, and um, my my daughter wants to be a vet. They have fourth grade zoology classes. She's taking it this year, so that's a curriculum class for her. So um, yeah, you just kind of. Kind of got to find the resources, research it, and uh, find what fits your children. Yeah. Easy. The other easy thing I would say is, as you get, nights. I'd say the other thing I'd say is, as your kids get older and they become, uh, I mean, we we gave them a lot more latitude as they got older. Like this year, um, we jokingly say that our kids on work release because he goes, he has like a part time job working at a an accounting firm. Um. So we're letting them do much more self-directed stuff. And so that might be like more of a internship type style thing. Um, or it might be, um, you know, just like my, I did a, I did a um, agriculture, like a, like a regenerative or sustainable agriculture class from one of my kids. I gave him readings from books I I had been reading and that I was interested in. Um, you know, just a chapter or two out of each book, nothing, nothing too onerous. Um, had him watch a bunch of YouTube channels of, of guys that are actually doing it well. Um, you know, like Greg, Judy and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, you can like just make it up, um, especially as they get older. And, you know, it just, it just depends on how your, how your curriculum is certified. In South Carolina, we have several options. So we, we have, uh, maybe a little more latitude. I don't know how other states are governed, but it's it's pretty good here. So nice, Didn't dude. That'd be so awesome play. if I got my kids into the same like stuff that I'm into, and just see how like what they learn on their own and how how well they do. Just that'd be that'd be really cool to see. I mean, I mean, I mean, my... huge victory for. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say my, my 15 year old's really into cooking. So I went on YouTube and found a whole series of Gordon Ramsay cooking videos. And like that became part of his curriculum is watching oh, these gosh. Gordon Ramsay videos. So Great, I mean, there's cursing and all. Much. No, no. He's not that bad on the, on the YouTube videos, but 
we uh we we do we do watch Hell's Kitchen from time to time, so you know we, there's nice. that. But it's yeah, like you learn so, so much online for free. Oh yeah, and it's, you know the uh, well, I was telling you about the easy peasy zoology classes. That's completely free curriculum. So there there's so many there's so many courses out there. There's so many ways to teach your children out there that's not in a textbook. You know. You, you have to get creative with it. And and again, it's if you're going to be a homeschool teacher, you parent, you have to uh, do your research. You have to start thinking outside the box on things. Hey, that's a great point, man. You know, one of the things that really annoys me about, and I, and I don't mean to lump people into groups here, but, you know, a lot of homeschoolers are, are anti-vax, which is fine. We, we are, you know, we, we, we did not vaccinate our kids. We homeschooled. Man, you got to recognize you make those choices. It's on you. You're the parent. Mm -hmm. You got to be freaking responsible. Got to do your research. You got to be more attentive to your kid if they start having problems. I mean, if if you've got a kid with a fever and you don't see any other symptoms, you got to be thinking, is this meningitis? You know, I mean, you have to be thinking that stuff. These people make these choices and they completely abdicate responsibility for the consequences. Absolutely the antithesis of what true freedom is. When you when you want to abdicate that responsibility to your children, especially so. Well, and and those decisions affect your kids lifelong. Like that's that's like the responsibility as a parent is it's yeah I'm making this decision in this moment because I believe this, but the lifelong consequences of you know for your kid. Like, what if your kid thirty forty years down the road is like, well, why didn't you give me this vaccination? Yep. And we, we've been having those like, conversations. Yeah. Or just like the everyday way you handle things. Like sure. there was something, there was there was an incident, very, very, very minor incident um, when I was at the airport. And the way I handled it, my son was like, I'm not your friend anymore. You're mean. And, <laughs> and you know what? I know he's only like four but that hurt that hurt my feelings he was bullying you i he felt like, like i'm what? sure he felt like i was bullying him and so mm-hmm. i'm like that really bothered me Dude, i talked to my wife anymore. later that night i'm like that messed me up that really Look, hurt we were riding down the road a few weeks ago and we got behind a slow car and my, i hear my daughter from the back seat go oh great they got a handicap sign on their license plate like I know exactly who that came from. I, I, she got that for me. Was... <laughs> so yeah, you got to be careful. <laughs> uh, I, I got to make amends. I got to make amends with my son. I know he's only three, but it bothered me that he, like he, like whatever, whatever he thought I did was so mean that like we were like best friends, and then now we're not because. Uh, okay, but but. For you to I know I'm his dad. I'm his dad. No, 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 no. That's, that's not where I'm going with this. That's, that's not where I'm going with this. But for him to see you come to him and say, Hey, I'm sorry, that wasn't right. Like t- to me, that goes far beyond just sweeping under the rug. And like that shows a I think that's important for our kids. Sure. To see that mom and dad aren't always right. Or, or right. even or even just having a conversation about why you made the choice to act that way in that moment. You know? Yeah. You know, I think like, like I think back to like my, my wife's parents, and I don't think she would mind me sharing this, but like when, when there was disagreements, they just acted like it never happened. They swept it under the rug. There was never any explanation of why we did this or why we didn't do this. You know, back to the mental health stuff. They didn't talk about it. It's just like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get over it. Like, have these conversations with your kids whether it's mental health bullying decisions that you made you acted a fool i mean whatever just you acted a fool just have yeah, i mean i've your kid like that i've lost my temper before and gone back and apologized to my kids you know, I, I, shouldn't, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done that i shouldn't have acted like that i'm, I'm so sorry yeah. i mean you have to show that's uh, not perfect taking, yeah and, and and that you take responsibility for your own actions and mm-hmm. You know, going back to what we were talking, what the original concept was here, talking about bullying. I mean, I think a lot of the kids that are that are acting out like that are in an environment where they have no control. 
they have no sense of maybe even self within the home relationships that they're mm -hmm. in. And the only way that they feel like they can assert any kind of control over anything is to be a, to be a, you know, a bully. A bully. Yeah. And you know, you're modeling when you're modeling behavior, even if you, even if you have to be really firm, like in a customer service interaction or whatever, and your kid goes, dude, that was, that was brutal. What, you know, what was that all about? Like, you know, at least you can go back and explain that you can have the conversation. You can, let him understand how he can, you know, control himself or, or act, a, you know, in a certain way. I mean, I, 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 I was, um, I just put this on Twitter. I was working with, um, I went to go pick up some cattle panels. So I'm going to expand one of our pig paddocks. And uh, I was um, getting the equipment trailer hooked up and I, I had a couple of hay bales sitting on it. Um, so my 19 year old, who's not, um, he's only driven the tractor a couple of times. He goes, Hey, you want me to grab the tractor and get that hay, hay bale off the trailer? Dude, that's, that's awesome, man. That's the kid who's like coming into his own a bit. Would never volunteer to do that a year ago, you know, even though he's plenty old enough, drives well and all that, just wouldn't volunteer to do that. And, um, you know, giving them that little space to, to take control over certain things, acknowledging you're, you're human and you can make mistakes and seeing them, like letting them understand it's okay to make mistakes, big, big, big difference, man. And uh, in my opinion, and and how they form, you know, uh, as as adults as they come into adulthood. Yeah. Well, I even want them to make mistakes now when they're at home, yeah. and it's small mistakes instead of hey, exactly. I need to bail you out mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would much rather, you know, uh, my 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 other one of my other sons, he he actually yeah. uh, knocked over a, a little deck we had built our processing shed with the tractor. And I'm like, no problem, man. It's much better to make that mistake right there than it is to make a mistake when like someone else's kid is at the farm or whatever. You know, like that. There's well, a context where those mistakes are completely forgivable. Oh yeah. And, and how you respond to those mistakes is key because if you overreact and 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 your immediate response is to punish, and and like they're they're afraid to make mistakes. They're they're afraid to tell you things. It's like my my son. He's, he's gotten to where he'll come and he'll confess things that he did a couple of years ago. I'm like, well, that wasn't right. That wasn't good. Um, maybe we don't do that, but okay. Thanks for years. telling me. Like it's, you know, <laughs> that's, that's really funny, <laughs> but it's, it's like, he's been harboring this guilt for, for two, three years now. And it's, but like, but the response of, okay, that's not right. We don't do this for this reason. Thank you for telling me. Gives him the comfort to come back and sure. to, confide in us um which i don't think a lot of kids have i'm not saying that we're doing things right but that's at least our mentality to, to at least try to do things right I'll, I'll tell you my mess up so when i met my wife she already had two boys right never been around kids didn't know how to be around kids didn't know how to be a dad figure or anything so for several years and i'm ashamed of this now uh, my, my first reaction was anger and punishment whenever they mess something up i'm assuming that's how you were raised <laughs> yeah it, I, I, had a, I had an abusive alcoholic stepdad and and uh that i guess you know it's true what you grow up with is what you know you, you learn you grow up to be but uh i've learned over the years to calm down and slow down and and my kids are much more open to coming to me now when there's a problem or if they mess up or you know i I had to restart over and that, that wasn't easy. So I guess what I'm saying is avoid that all together if you can. But well, even yeah. back to the original topic though, if, if, if there's that open line of communication, mm -hmm. your kids are more likely to come talk to you if they are getting bullied at school and you can do something about it instead of just one day you wake up with a note. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, creating that open line of communication where, Maybe they've been internalizing the bullying and think it's all their fault that they did something wrong. And, and you know, they know that, that if their dad expects them never to make a mistake, they can't admit that they did something that you know, maybe they maybe they think that, you know, you know, what I'm saying like they they internalize the stuff in ways you could never imagine. And if they, you can't create that opportunity to have the conversation and, you know, you, you really put yourself out there in a, in a way that's pretty dangerous. I, mean, I, I had I've told the story here before. This is a probably. I don't know when we started this couple a year or so ago, but my uh, one of my kids, he was three, I think about three years old. He was loading the dishwasher 
And I just lost my mind because he put like the fork in upside down or something like that. Something stupid, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> something must have, must have happened earlier, earlier right. in the day that you yeah, just yeah. lost. That fork doesn't go like, that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, you know, I'm, I'm making fun of it, but I mean, I was very ashamed because I could right. see these like tears well up in his eyes over like my reaction. I'm like, wait a minute, you know, why would I expect a three year old to be born with, you know, the you know, our family way of loading the dishwasher, whatever that would be. Like, why would I expect that? Like, why am I not stopping and saying, Hey, you know, it's, it's, it's better to do it this way or whatever. Um, and I don't remember, you know, it, maybe, maybe it was, wasn't quite as trivial as, you know, of working upside down, but you know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 I just realized in that moment, I, I'm here to be a teacher. So I'm trying so hard it, and I still have to remind myself because there are moments where, you know, emotionally, I'm just like, what the, you know, um, yeah. You know, sometimes on the farm, a mistake can be a pretty big mistake, you know, um, you know, forgetting to lock a gate, forgetting to give water to an animal. I mean, that can be, you know, dire consequences. But uh, I'm trying to remember, remind myself, I'm first and foremost a teacher to them. And secondly, um, you know, that I'm here to provide them the opportunity to, you know, to grow up and, and make like like um, Jeremy was saying, make those mistakes in the in the context where. And you know, we can kind of safeguard uh, lives and property and, and uh, you know, incarceration or whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's been, been been a real, real struggle. It's a journey. It's always a, a lot of personal growth involved in being a, being a parent for sure. And they don't come with manuals. There's no one size fits all like, like school stuff. I mean, like there's every kid's different. Every kid's got to you know, be raised uniquely. I was talking to a guy the other day. Uh, he was struggling. He, he's got a 10 month old. And I was like, man, I'm telling you, we're just winging it. All us parents are just winging it. We're, we're learning on the fly. We're figuring things out as we go. Cause yeah. I, I got 21, 15 and 10 and they're all three different. You know, what work with one does not work with the next one. So, you know, it, yeah, it's constantly. Yeah, and, and that old, that oldest is uh, the prototype, man. They're the beta. I mean, you're 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 gonna mess them up so bad. You know? Oh yeah, I'm the I'm the oldest child too, so I, I know. Yeah, that explains a lot right here. <laughs> Wait, are we all the oldest? I'm the oldest. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. 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 That's funny. Well, I think we all turned out the best. So I don't really know any of your siblings, but I think we're all great. Now, we've got some pretty incredible siblings. That was one thing that was cool about that trip we took, and I I feel very selfish getting to have my brothers and my sons together with me in that trip, but. One of the coolest things was my sons getting to interact with their uncles and, you know, see their uncle, like hear their uncles, you know, they're all, they're all pretty accomplished dudes. They've got families, they've got careers and they're, you know, one of them's got his own business, um, you know, just crushing it. Another one, like I said, pretty high level administrator in a, in a large high school in Mesa and another one's uh, similar to me, a uh, finance executive in a large company. So um you know all doing well all to all managing their families and their money differently and you know it, it just was really good for them to see that um and that's another thing i, I my kids didn't have grandparents because my mom and dad died pretty young um so you know having those opportunities for them to interact with family members especially but i think in particular with other male role models for my sons is really important you know so another really mm -hmm. important thing i think yeah my brother doesn't talk to me well, yeah, that's why well, it sucks. My, my brother's name is Richard, and I literally ordered a Don't Be a Richard t shirt on Amazon just to go say hi to him. <laughs> 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 so we just kind of rag each other all the time. And I think it was good for my sons to see us interacting and being like, Oh, man, you're, you know, <laughs> just not. Just oh, this is a brother's brother. thing. Yeah, I see it. I yeah, see yeah. It. yeah. Need to well, see I think this was uh, really helpful. I actually got a little white pilled on public schools today. So this is this has been good. Right. I might actually take a look at that other uh, other school nearby and see if that might be a good fit for us um, or see if there's more options, more rocks that we haven't looked under. So appreciate you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Going up. It's been, been a good discussion. I agree. Anything you guys want to wrap up on or should we go around? Go around. All right. Uh, I got to find there, there he is. There's, there's Mr. There, Dewey. There Mr. Dewey. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, chickens, garden, was going to be bees, not going to be bees until next year. 
all kinds of content. Compile. Puss bag content. Puss bag. Yeah. <laughs> Remind me sometime to tell you about my new package of beads. You got it. Uh, do do it in the Telegram chat. Yeah. All right. Where's uh? Where's there? There's Loaf King. <laughs> Not Loaf King anymore. I don't bake anymore, but oh man. Uh Smith Homestead.com. Uh that's my online store. So everything's handmade by us in the family. Uh I I cannot ship you produce across the United States, so don't try to order it. Um Twitter at there we go. So Twitter, Padre Homestead or uh Smith Homestead. And um, yeah, that's it. Old paths, old paths homestead. Thank you. And long story farms. Yeah, long story farms, long story farms dot com for our barn to door store and uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, you know, we we don't we don't ship, but uh, if you're in the central South Carolina area, we'll be glad to deliver. Um, so let me know when you up. do ship. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I've I've been flirting with it. I was talking to uh, some different folks about it. We'll see. But uh, yeah, but yeah. Um, pork and poultry primarily. Uh, we got a bunch of chickens coming off the pasture here in a couple of weeks, so ready to go. Whatever you need for those uh, pork and poultry stuff. So yeah. awesome. Thank you. And I'm at farmhoplife.com. That's it. <laughs> uh, it kind of it kind of seems like all we do is the men forums lately, but I like these. I like these men's forums. You, I'm still been traveling try to a lot. Them, um, dude. The content makes the content hard. And when I am home, like my wife's like, you need to be home. Don't yep. be trying to. I know you. I know she's like. I know you want to just make stuff, like catch up on projects. She's like, I need you to be here. Yeah, that's, that's what's important. And so. Uh, a lot of things are taking a back seat, like more than they already were. More stuff's taking a back seat. So gotta respect the wife. So sometimes wife does it to you. Yep. Yep. So appreciate you guys for showing up and thank you everybody for watching, listening. Um actually a huge turnout. I don't know if you guys can see that number. It says 48 people. 47, right something like that. That's yep. crazy. That's crazy. I had it pulled up on my phone. I kept looking down. <laughs> nice. So thanks. Thank you, everybody. And we'll see you in a couple weeks. Talk to you later.